morning and welcome to Bavarian International School's Virtual Open Day 2021. As we continue to have more attendees join, let me introduce myself and the panelists. I'm Dr. Christy Sorensen, head of school at BIS since 2014, as well as an executive board member. Prior to that, I was head of the Dresden International School for six years. And before that, in 2001, I actually started an international school in Monterey, California. So I have been leading international schools for 20 years now, and time has flown. Um, I'm also currently the president of the board of the Academy for International School Heads, which is a global organization for international school heads all over the world. And I'm also very active in service here locally in Munich um, as a Rotarian. I myself am a mother of three. My two oldest having graduated from Dresden International School and my youngest in grade eight here at the Bavarian International School, BIS. Um, so I have actually in the recent uh, year experienced everything from online distance learning to hybrid learning and very excited kid who was able to go back to on-site learning. Ah, further panelists, um, I, I'll just ask them to do a little hand wave so you know who, who they are. Uh, first, I'll introduce Angela Hudson, our primary school principal uh, for our Heimhausen campus. We have Annette Austin, who is our uh, primary, the deputy principal and primary years or PYP uh, coordinator. We have Brett Moiley, Brett's there. Um, he is our secondary principal for grades six through eight. We have Dr. Rowan Skeen, there he is, um, who is our secondary principal for grades nine through 12. We have Katarina Roth, Katarina. She is our primary admissions officer here in Heimhausen. And last but certainly not least, we have Allegra Peruzzi, our secondary admissions officer, and herself an alumni of BIS, the class of 2007. So our virtual open day is being recorded. Um, in the interest of data protection, only the panelists are able to turn on and off their microphones and their cameras. We have prepared a brief overview, basically, of the school and the programs, and we'll follow with a question and answer session. At the bottom of your screen in Zoom, you should be able to see a Q&A button. In there, you can actually type your answers in uh, your, your questions into the chat. I will then at the end in the QA session, we'll read them so that they are also there for the benefit of the recording um, and then either answer or delegate to the respective panelists. You do not have to wait until the end to start typing your questions. You can do it as they come to you. So I will begin with sharing my screen. So, uh, BIS is one of approximately 5,400 IB World schools in 158 countries spread all over the world. This is a wonderful network of schools that shares best practice and learns from one another. I know some of your children are still primary aged and you may not be able to imagine them in secondary school yet, but believe me, it does happen quicker than you think. Looking at our most recent secondary results, not only did all of our graduate, all of our students in grade 12 graduate with a high school diploma, um, they also graduated with either an international baccalaureate diploma or careers related program diploma. And our IBDP average score was 36 compared to a worldwide average of 31. So if you're familiar with the German system, that 36 translates to an average 2.0 Abitur. And this year, BIS has turned 30. So based on a sound tradition, we are shaping the future of education. You are attending our Heimhausen campus open day, which is one of our two campuses. Heimhausen is approximately 15 kilometers north of Munich. For those of you who don't know, that's in Kais Dachau. We start with our early years students here, aged three, and also known as kindergarten 2.0, but I'll give, let uh, Angela and Annette give you more details on that. Then we go on to primary school, which encompasses grade one through grade five in our system. And then on to secondary school, which is grade six all the way through grade 12. 
Our full day program at Heimhausen begins at nine in the morning and runs until four. After that, we have fee-based after-school activities and they're offered until 5.30. We are truly an international school with a very diverse and inclusive community. The BIS Heinhausen campus has approximately 900 students with 61 different nationalities, and they find themselves represented in the staff that we have as well. English is our shared language, and what makes us truly international is our curriculum, which you will hear more about from the section, the different section principles. So I'd like to say BIS embodies an international spirit of global citizens and future game changers. Our suburban campus in Heimhausen is situated in a sprawling campus with our own Schloss Park, our castle park. Um, it has multiple sports fields, laboratories, et cetera. Our buildings are really generous. So even when our local primary schools had to split classes when they were allowed to return, we were able to distance our students so all of them could be on site in learning. Our students are digital natives and um, they're adept at using multiple platforms, um, whether they are working individually and in distance learning or um, in groups, which we also do, um, again, they will tell you more about, but collaboration is key here. Um, and even in distance learning, our students were able to collaborate. We recruit and retain top-notch teachers from all over the world. We have a maximum class size of 22 in our early years, 24 in our grades one through grade 10, and 18 in grades 11 and 12. In addition to the classroom teacher, we have teaching assistants in early years through grade two. We have specialist teachers for music, for drama, art, uh, PE, German, other more modern foreign languages. We have nurses, we have counselors, we have learning support, we have English language support teachers. Our teachers really know our students and they give a personalized education for individual pathways to success. Technology is not the be all end all, but if the pandemic has taught us anything, it is a tool we cannot live without. BIS has been working with educational technology since 2002. This includes interactive whiteboards and Apple TVs, IT support and continued professional learning for teachers. We explicitly teach digital citizenship and ensure there is more non-screen time than having students on devices. Technology is simply another tool teachers use to engage students in their learning journey. It gives both teachers and students the opportunity to be creative and innovative. Every student has strengths and at BIS, we help them to find their individual superpowers so they may flourish whether in or outside the classroom. In short, BIS is more than just a school. It is a home away from home, whether you are from Munich or elsewhere in the world. So that is an overview from me. So to go into a bit more detail, allow me to pass over first to Angela Hölze, our primary principal, who will br briefly introduce herself as well. Okay. So hello everybody, and um, thank you for that, Dr. Sorensen. My name is Angela Hurzel. I'm I am British. I'm from the north of England in Manchester, and I'm married to a German, which is where the funny name comes from. Well, Bavarian, he would say, not not uh, German. I've been in international schools also since 2001, and I actually started my journey here at um, Bavarian International School in grade three as a teacher and worked my way up from the school through the school. And also my son joined and graduated here in 2015, and he's now studying in um, LMU in um, the German university there. So a German pathway is also possible as you will hear. So my job this morning is to tell you a little bit more about the primary school here, that we offer the primary years um, program, which is a great program, which I stand behind and fully support and, and really love. It's not just a, my hashtag on, on Twitter, I always use is proud principal. And indeed I am a proud principal. So Mrs. Austin will tell you more about our program. We'll go through a little bit with you what the pathways to success 
mean? What does that look like in primary school? How do we help that? We have a wonderful, beautiful um, early year center, which is the highlight of my day to go down there and escape my office now and again and, and interact with some um, little people and talk more about the holistic approach because we are sort of academically rigorous. We're developing the children in all many ways, but we do it through warmth, through care, through fun, and hopefully a little bit of that will come through in the presentation today. Here we go. So that holistic um, approach, the main thing in our younger years is that it incorporates play, that the children are learning through play. The assessments that we carry out on the children, they would never know that they're doing. We're watching, observing, we're talking to them. They're having fun. We're having fun. The teachers are having fun. Everything we do is developmentally appropriate. We plan. It's nothing that we do is, is just just for fun it's the fun is planned so that we know that the children will learn from it and that it's developmentally appropriate that celebration of diversity is is something that's extremely special we when the world cup is on for, for the soccer we all choose our teams if our team goes out we choose the next team we celebrate together and um, the international community is wonderful the languages and so on but really important through that as well is our community um, I'll talk a little bit later on about our assemblies and the spirit days and what we do to come together and how we share. But actually, the parents are really important to us as well. We really view you as partners in, in teaching the, the children and helping them to grow and develop as global minded citizens, which is what we definitely want. It may, may sound a little bit idealistic, but if not in primary school, then where? Um, the one thing that's fascinating about our program is that the, we, everything we do is inquiry based. This means giving the children the opportunities to make connections, to interact with manipulatives, with real life things, experience things themselves, ask those questions and then develop their understanding already. Bearing in mind that we need to know what do they already know, you know, the children know so much already. So it's very different to some experiences you may have had in other schools around the world where you see lots of flashcards and learning through repetition. We're really learning for understanding and um, moving forward. I've talked about the fun and Mrs. Austin will also talk to you a little bit about the um, learner profile as well. So I'll pass over to her now. Good morning, everybody. I'm Annette Austin. I'm the Deputy Principal and the Curriculum Coordinator here at the Primary School at Heimhausen. Um, I've been in Germany seven years now, this time around. I've been at BIS seven years. Before that, I taught at MIS for about six years, and I was principal of an international school in South Africa. You can probably hear from my accent, I'm South African. I have three children, two of them grown up with their own families. They all live in Germany now, so Germany has become my home. As you all know, the world is changing really rapidly. And not only do we have to prepare our students to be successful in this rapidly changing world, but we have to prepare them for jobs, especially the kids in the primary school that may not even exist yet. Skills like collaboration, creativity, curiosity, as well as being connected to the world are really, really essential. So at BIS, we don't only focus on the academic, as Mrs. Hertz has said, but we follow me Following the International Baccalaureate Primary Years Program, I'm not going to say that big, those big words anymore, I'll just refer to it as the PYP. Um, we teach the students not only knowledge, but also skills, the understanding of big ideas or concepts, which they can then apply to the real world, as well as focusing on the development of attitudes and the capacity, of course, to take action and make a difference to the world. So when first designing the PYP curriculum framework, the developers considered different approaches to organizing the curriculum. These were six heads of schools, um, of international schools worldwide. In an effort to identify what a three to 12 year old student needs to know, and that could at the same time address globally significant issues, they came up with six transdisciplinary themes worth exploring, regardless of where students are in the world are and with which ethnic or cultural group they identify. These globally and socially driven themes that frame the PYP provide a starting point from which students can examine issues and opportunities that they experience in the real world. So they really provide the students with authentic learning experience that are not confined to the boundaries of traditional subjects, although of course we incorporate the subjects into these big themes. 
So at BIS, our children really, really love coming to school every day. We see happy children here every day because their learning experiences are fun and engaging. They're relevant to the children and they're relevant to the real world. They're significant and challenging, so we do stimulate their minds. Learning is thus deep, cohesive, connected and current. International mindedness is something too that is at the center of both the culture and the curriculum at our school. It is characterized by an openness to the world and a deep interconnectedness to other people. It recognizes similarity and affirms differences between communities, between people, and between nations. So here at BIS, the recognition and, affirm and affirmation of differences encourages a celebration and a value of this diversity. So there's a very close connection between international mindedness and the learner profile, which are 10 attributes we strive to develop in our students from three-year-olds to 18-year-olds. So we encourage our students to be inquirers, knowledgeable, thinkers, reflective, communicators, open-minded, risk-takers, balanced, principled, and caring. And these are words that you will hear often throughout their time here at BIS. So Mrs. Herschel has spoken a little bit about inquiry, so I'm not going to speak too much about that, but that is the leading pedagogical approach in the PYP. And it recognizes students as being actively involved in their own learning and taking responsibility for their learning. So through inquiry, the students relate to, they explore, and they understand the world around them. So the IB believes that this is the, the way students learn best. Inquiry nurtures curiosity and promotes enthusiasm for lifelong learning. It encourages students to think, to challenge, and to extend their ideas, and it prompts them to take, to take action. It incorporates problem solving and supports students in achieving personal and shared goals. So through inquiry, students move from current understandings to new and deeper understandings. So back over to you, Mrs. Hester. Thank you. So the early years center, just to talk a little bit about out that we have um, four rooms that are all connected and lead both all of the classrooms lead out onto garden and playground space. The children in there start their day being very much welcomed, singing, sharing, morning circle, and all of the activities and um, the experiences that we create for our children are say are very carefully planned. We are looking very carefully at developing the children's relationships, again, making them already start thinking themselves as active learners, asking questions, wanting to find out the answers. And the most special thing I find about how we in the, the primary years program here at BIS work with our children is we're teaching them reading and writing and maths and creative thinking and science and art and all of those things through play and when they are ready. So again, it's it's not that having to sit and look at flashcards and re learn through repeat and practice, it's that we notice where every single child is, where, when they are ready to start reading and formally turning their little scribbles and drawings into letters and numbers and so on. And then what happens is they actually fly. It's, it's a joy to see them learn and become lifelong learners. And they go through the process when they are ready much quicker. Um, outdoor learning has become increasingly important to the whole of the primary school, particularly the early years, given the amount of time that we have to we have had to spend on technology of late in order to do that learning from home and so on. So balancing that with that being out in nature, learning outdoors and, and creating beautiful artworks and so on with what's in the um, environment around us, around us is great, as well as the children learning to care for and nurture the environment and the garden as well. So the, the early years is definitely a very special place to me and something that I highly recommend, you just can't beat. Okay, the pathways to success, what does that mean? Is to try and give you a little overview of the fact that every, everything we do, so we start learning about maths, for example, we find out what do the children already know? How, how, where are their understandings? The children come in from all over the world, they join during through the year and they often leave, leave again. One of the great things about the PYP program that is, is that it's used throughout the world in many different countries and languages. So again, the transition in and out of our school to other places is really easy. But that means that we do have our extra teachers who come into the class and work with the children to help those children who don't have English as their first language to be able to achieve their success and potential in the school. 
um, and in their lives, of course. The children then have little pull-out groups where they learn extra English and the, the teachers come in and support with them. There's lots of focus on team teaching, collaborating together. And for those children who may have um, sort of challenges with learning, we have learning support teachers that both can help with enriching the children who are very strong and very academically able and want extra practice and those children who need a little bit more time or explanation. Of course, with transitioning in and out of an international school as well, we have a wonderful counselling department that are available and help with parents and families and children with all of their issues or, or celebration in their successes of who they are and so on at the school. We do teach the children German from the, from the early years. They have lessons in German and from grade one on, they have five lessons a week of German active learning as well. So if they're German language native speakers, that is, is nurtured and continued through the school. And if they're brand new to German, then they start learning it as soon as they enter the school here. Um, there's lots of options for the children to have choice in what they're learning. We have a fabulous um, elective program, which is run on a Thursday afternoon, where all of the teachers offer something that they love or they're interested in or that's fun, that the children can also then choose themselves. So that could be a sporting activity, an art activity, a creative activity, or an academic enrichment activity. And there's lots of choice. We change that three times a year. So three times a year, the children get to choose what lesson they would like to go to during that period. The home language, our, our mother tongue, as many of you may know it, is very, very important to us. We do honour that. We do know it's vitally important that the children have strong mother tongue. And so on a Monday afternoon, we have volunteers from our community, another example of where our com community members come forward, and they run mother tongue groups where the children of the same language can, can talk about their own traditions, celebrate their language, continue to learn, and so on. Um, Mrs. Um, Dr. Sorensen already talked about the health department, so I will move on to the next slide now. One thing I think that you will find as a parent at BIS in the primary school really special is the way that we communicate with you. We look at the, the learning journey of your child as a partnership, and you will get so much information about how you're doing, how your child is doing in the school on a real time um, basis. So we have electronic portfolios. We use Seesaw as the platform where the children make videos, photograph their work, do assignments in sometimes on the iPad in there. And then they, they're, the baseline is there for you so you can see what it is the children are learning about. And you can see exactly how your child is doing on that day in that activity and so on. The teachers write you a blog every single week so you get an overview of what's been on been going on this week there's photos are shared and then they tell you what's coming up next week as well as of course how you can help at home i also send out a regular blog as well to give you an overview of what's going on in the school as a community we have um, regular parent meetings and conferences presentations lovely is seeing the students lead um, you through their learning, how they've progressed, what their goals are for themselves, and what, what they need to improve on and so on. And of course, at the end of the year, there is a, um, a formal written report that comes home to you as well. It should never be though that anything in that report is a surprise because you've joined us through the whole of the journey through the year and seen how your child has progressed. There's a little um, diagram there, which we share with the teachers. That's just for your information to see that, that this our focus is always on monitoring and documenting and sharing the learning and um, that you're joined with us in that process. So what else do we offer? There's a little photo there of our grounds. That's something that money just can't buy, that beautiful environment we have. We have a forest on our doorstep, a small river, a stream. Um, we, we get outside, we utilize those for sports facilities, even though, say we might have small three-year-olds, we even have a little cross-country skiing for when it's um, snowing that the, the little ones go outside and learn skiing. So there's so many just from where we're actually physically located that we can utilize to our advantage. We do have in grades three, four, and five, we start going on residential trips to again enhance the learning outside of the school. We have a maker space where the children are making, using robots, doing all sorts of fun, creative, really challenging their thinking, as well as the traditional academic learning that goes on as well. 
The after school activities, I think, has been mentioned. The students even have their own student council where they come and they bring issues to us. You know, they always ask for more recess time, but, you know, we discuss why um, different ways that they can make a, a, a positive contribution to the school. It's really lovely. They do lots of fundraising initiatives for themselves. We have a partner school in Nepal that we support. And of course, what the school is so special with the community building that we do, the spirit days, the joining in together and the celebrations and traditions that we every week in assembly come together and share. I'm going to pass finally back, I think, to Mrs. Austin to talk to you about the highlight of the PYP. Yes, at the end of their time in the PYP, which is in grade five, the students participate in an exhibition, which is a culmination of all their learning throughout the PYP. So this is a student initiated inquiry with a theme, this issue matters to me, to my community and my world. So the students work independently and collaboratively to research their issue and to then take action. And this huge celebration of their learning is also the students rite of passage to the secondary school to grade six. Okay. So we hand back over then to um, the secondary school now, which leads in very nicely, having talked just about the final, the very last thing that the children do in the PYP. And we'll hand over now to Mr. Moyley and Dr. Skeen in the secondary school. Thank you. Good morning, everyone, and thank you to uh, Ms. Hertzel and Ms. Austin for that uh, wonderful introduction to the primary school. And so much of what uh, they have talked about, um, I will briefly touch on, um, but without perhaps as much detail, I don't want to repeat that. Uh, my name is Brett Moyley. Um, I'm the secondary principal, uh, grades six to eight uh, here at Bavarian School. And like so many of our staff, I've been here for a long time. This is my 11th year in the school and it's my uh, 20th year working in international baccalaureate schools. I've worked in four. I've also worked for international baccalaureate for the last uh, 20 years or so as a consultant in the middle years uh, program. My family background is I am a New Zealander originally, but as you can tell from my surname, I've got strong connections in this region. My family are from uh, Graubünden in Switzerland. I know Grosshaus is still there up in the valleys. Um, my educational philosophy with regard to the children is very, very simple. We want the uh, children to achieve excellence in whatever form that might look like for them. Um, and we measure their potential and we actively seek to uh, maximize their potential uh, as they go through. And we can support that with uh, dedicated uh, staff. Um, again, we try to attract and retain the best staff that we can. And as Ms. Herzl uh, mentioned, we have uh, wonderful facilities to do that with. Now, a very brief introduction to uh, our program. Uh, the IB Middle Years program runs um, from uh, grades six through 10, but my area of responsibility is only grades six to uh, eight. So I'll, I won't uh, mention anything more than that. It's globally recognized. The IB Middle Years program has been going for uh, nearly 30 years now, and it exists in 150 uh, countries around the world. And indeed, uh, my niece went through a MYP a program in a school uh, in New Zealand many years ago. It's globally recognized and it's transferable. So whether your children enroll with us and then you move uh, to Australia, New Zealand, the United States, United Kingdom, Japan, you can take the uh, work that the children are doing from this school and transfer it to the next school. Uh, again, like the primary years program, um, the MIP is, is inquiry based and it's conceptually based as well. There is an emphasis on um, knowing and acquiring knowledge and skills, but also we want the students to be able to work with concepts, the big ideas of learning, and that are the transferable ideas. We know through uh, the documentation uh, that we have that the MIP is ideal preparation for uh, grades 11 and 12. And our aim is to transition the students through from grade six through to grade 10 in order to prepare them best for their uh, senior subjects in the diploma um, and in the uh, IB career related program as well. 
We do have an e emphasis on excellence in academics, and we measure this independently because we use a, a, an international testing program called International Schools Assessments, which is uh, indexed to um, uh, the PISA results. In particular, we focus on uh, the universals of uh, English and mathematics, and we assess the students in their English, their uh, uh, English reading and writing, and in mathematical uh, processes as well. And what we're able to say there is across the grades that we know that we are uh, successful um, at more than uh, average levels for all schools of the same type around the world. We have a strong commitment to international mindedness, the same as the primary school, and we have a, a strong commitment to multilingualism as well. And I'll talk about that again in a couple of minutes. But overall, the work that within the program that the children have will be challenging. They take eight subjects uh, on a daily basis or a weekly basis, and they're grouped into language and literature. And students can take uh, a first language in uh, German or English or both. They'll then take a second language, which will be um, Chinese, French, or Spanish. So all students uh, coming through grades six, seven, and eight are taking English, German as a requirement, and a third language as well. That's supplemented by other core subjects, humanities, science, mathematics. Every student takes an arts option, music, drama, or visual art, and they're normally combined during the courses of grades six, seven, and eight. They do a design course, and that's not only uh, uh, integrated technology, um, but it's also design and build. We have workshops where students design product and build it as well. And a physical health and education program, as Ms. Hertz will show you, we have fantastic uh, sports facilities in the school. And our aim is that students will uh, look at uh, physical health and education, not only uh, academically, but also to be involved every day in some kind of sporting activity. One of the things that sets aside the uh, MYP program from other uh, programs at this age group is interdisciplinary studies. And at each year of the program, there's a strong emphasis on subjects working together so that students see the natural links between the subject areas. And for example, the one that I work on most closely is an interdisciplinary unit between the science and humanities where we look at how rivers work, both from a perspective of uh, how humans interact with rivers, but also how uh, the rivers interact with humans, the effect of one thing on another. In MYP, uh, we have a strong commitment to service in the community as well. And in each year of the program, students fulfill a portfolio of service and individual service and also a grade level service. And what we're hoping through that is that students will make a commitment to service through their whole lives. We have a strong commitment to student reflection as well. So not only do we provide lots of opportunities to feedback to students and parents on their learning, but students have the opportunity to reflect on their own learning and to set themselves targets for learning. In terms of sharing information, again, uh, very similar to the primary school program. However, our platforms are slightly different. And you might be familiar with our Google Classroom um, as, a, as the teaching and learning uh, program that our uh, families use most. We find that's ideal for whether the students are in school, whether on distance learning or in any form of hybrid. We have a, a program for school management that's dedicated to uh, IB programs called Manage Back, and that's where we share more formal information with you with regard to student progress and the student reports. And again, like primary school, we have a number of conferences and meetings with you uh, during the course of the year. At the moment, uh, they are distance learning based. Um, but we welcome you on site as much as we possibly can. Again, like Brian, we have a very strong commitment to pastoral care. Each student works within a mentor group and each grade level has a pastoral care coordinator that looks after the needs of the students. We have a strong counselling program, two dedicated uh, counsellors in our secondary school program that look after the students' uh, emotional well-being. We have an enrichment program like the primary school and every second week the uh, students are able to choose from a variety of different topics that they can explore. And again, a strong commitment to learning outside the classroom and indeed in our grades seven and eight program, uh, we work with uh, Outward Bound uh, internationally uh, to run programs uh, for students. In grade six, there's an introductory adventure camp for the students where we take them away for experiential learning. So again, I come back to the point where we, uh, the work, we challenge your children, it's at an age appropriate level, they'll work hard, but they're going to have fun and enjoy what they do as well. A Couple of uh, things that we feel are um, 
uh, unique to the school at the moment that I'll mention. But first of all, in grade six, we've moved the students into a homeroom-based program to aid their transition from primary school. And in grade six, they work with a mentor for four subject areas, for their language and literature, English, for humanities, for science and mathematics, the homeroom. So normally in the school day of six lessons per day, between three and four of those are with one teacher, and then they move out to other subject areas during the course of the day. And what we're doing is trying to blend the model of where they are homeroom based and primary schools full time to a more secondary model, but without moving to six different lessons every day where they're moving across a big campus. We have a, a unique feature in our, our grade six, seven and eight programs, the Newcomer Centre. Most international schools struggle to accommodate students with beginning or very limited English, but we have a program here in the school that allows the students to come in at effectively zero English and progressively integrate through the language acquisition and language and literature classes. It's something that is a unique feature of the school and in my work with International Baccalaureate, I've not seen this in any other school that I've visited. Our home languages program is a little bit different to the primary school because it's integrated into the full curriculum. And at the moment, 14 different mother tongues are taught inside the regular school timetable either online or through visiting tutors or through uh, one of the subjects, sorry, one of the language areas uh, working directly with uh, students. We have a strong learning support program as well for students that have uh, academic needs and support. We identify those students and we work with the families and the students to support those students so they can reach the same academic outcomes as any other student in the school. The students are not withdrawn from other classes to do that. It is timetabled within their normal learning program. From next year, we're very proud to introduce a gifted and talented program called Infinity, where we'll identify students who are asynchronous learners. This not, may not necessarily be the absolute top, top academic students, but it will reward and support students who have uh, learning needs that are outside a learning support and who need to be challenged uh, in different ways. And again, like the primary school, a myriad of after school activities uh, inside the classrooms uh, or in the sports field with drama and music and arts to support that as well. One thing that I can promise you in grades six to eight and through the whole school is that your children will be cared for, cared for. they'll be nurtured, they'll have lots of opportunities and they'll enjoy coming to school every day and they'll have fun. It will be hard work for them at times. There's no substitute for that. There's no substitute for academic excellence, whatever that might mean for your children. But please understand that for us, we will nurture them and care for them as they come through their secondary school. I'll now hand over to Dr. Skeen. Thank you, Mr. Moiley. Uh, a very warm welcome from me to all of you this morning. My name is Rowan Skeen and I'm the principal for the last four years here at Bavarian International School, grades nine up to grade 12. Um, a little bit about me, I am Australian originally um, and I've uh, worked and taught in Australia and the UK and now Germany. Uh, my wife is German and that's why I'm here. I've been at Bavarian International School for 12 years. Uh, well, this is my 12th year, uh, and I've had a range of different leadership positions while I've been here. Um, I would say that my major and keen interest is student voice, and I've done extensive research and extensive study into student voice and finding out what learners are really saying about learning and how they learn best. Okay, so I'll talk a little bit today about the academic side of grades 9, 10, 11 and 12, and also a little bit more about how we make students uh, flourish. I think a lot of the stuff that I could talk about has already been covered by Ms. Herzl, Ms. Austin and Mr. Moiley, but I'll add a little bit more as well. Okay, so the academic side of things. Grade nine heralds the start of the transcript process. So this is where students for four years have their report grades, their report data recorded um, from semester to semester. And it cor correlates in a, 
a document which records their academic progress from grade nine to grade 12. This is something that a lot of universities require, uh, and it sort of marks the start of, um, you know, a more of a, an academic um, focus leading to the end of your sons and daughters school career. We build upon the fantastic work that has gone on at the primary level, in the early middle years level, and that builds up to our programs in the later years. In grade nine, students carry on from their middle years program in grade eight. They do, um, they do start to look at perhaps where they want to go after grade 10. By the time they get into grade 10, we've reduced the subject load by one subject, and they start to think a little bit more about what they'd like to pursue in the later years and after school by choosing an elective. Students then at the end of grade 10 get their MYP, their middle years certificate. Um, and we're looking at introducing the e-assessments into the final year of grade 10, uh, the final year of MYP um, in the, the upcoming year. Once students have got their MYP certificate, they're then eligible to move on to our DP, our diploma program, our CP, our careers program, and our high school diploma programs. You're probably very familiar with the diploma program, um, and it's probably the, the IBO's program that most people are aware of. But of course, we've got all the other programs which are absolutely fabulous as well. I'll tell you a little bit about our careers program. In our careers program, we have students moving in there who have more of a vocational focus to their studies. They perhaps know that they want to move into um, a specific field, be it tourism or hospitality or some form of uh, engineering, or art, um, and they have an alternative program in the CP, as we call it. So they do some diploma subjects. They also do some professional skills. They do an internship. They also study a what we call a vocational program, which happens to be our BTEC business. Um, and they follow this on and they are awarded the, the careers program uh, certificate. And most of our graduates, and we've had the program running now for a number of years, do actually move on into university uh, and other um, training programs. The diploma program um, is made up of six subjects. The subjects have to be a A language, a B language. Um, a lot of our students actually choose English as an A language and German as an A language. 50% of our students receive what we call a bilingual diploma. You then have your humanity subjects that you choose, science, maths, and you have a choice of uh, doing an arts or doing a second humanities or uh, doing a second science. A high school diploma program is our third program. And again, this is for students who do not want to do the diploma program or do not want to take the careers program, but perhaps know exactly what they want and exactly what they need. And it's recognized by the New England Schools Association and it allows students to have access to universities through the high school diploma. Instead of doing six subjects, um, which are all uh, which are standard level or, or three, three standard level or three higher level, they do all standard level subjects in the, um, the high school diploma. We have an excellent passing rate among our students leaving in grade 12 and moving into university and further study. Our average point score is 36 out of 45. Um, and this equates to about uh, two points in the German Abitur um, program. Students who are coming in and doing our diploma program are also eligible for receiving a qualification that allows them admittance to German universities um, and grants them the Abitur. They have to follow a couple of guidelines to do with higher level and standard level and languages and a few other bits and pieces, but a, a large number of our students 
receive the diploma and also receive the abattoir, about 30 to 40% each year. Although we are primarily a diploma school. We have extremely good pass rate um, and uh, the uh, students in all of the programs um, have are very well supported by our university counselors here, Ms. Moorehouse and Mr. Madden. Uh, you might want to go back to the, the, the other one, Mr. Moy. Okay. The other thing I wanted to talk about very briefly is the strong uh, university counseling um, support that we offer here to students, and that uh, most of our students, 90% in fact, get their first choice university. And students go all over the world. We have students mainly going to the US, the UK, the Netherlands, um, and also um, in the EU itself. Okay, thank you, Mr. Moiley. As Mr. Moiley and um, also our, our pr primary school colleagues have said, we have a very, very strong pastoral support here. We have our counselors, we have our learning support, we have our pastoral leaders, we have our mentors. What we say is that no students should fall through the gaps and indeed they don't. No matter what sort of support or need your son or daughter requires, they will get it. Whether it's a large amount of support for success and then extra flourishing, or uh, it's a smaller amount, depending on what sort of support that student needs for success, we're able to offer it here. There is, from grade nine onwards, a very strong careers program. We're one of few international schools that has a PSHE program, that's a personal, social, and health education. As I said, we have a very strong uh, counseling team in our university department, and we have interview days, we have career days, we have all sorts of support going on to ensure that your son and daughter are making the right choices in their move from grade 10 into grade 11, and the right choices then moving on from grade 12. Some of the highlights in the secondary calendar for grade nine is our bike trip to Vienna at the end of the year. This is something that's a real highlight. Uh, another highlight is our work experience program at the end of grade 10. I often ask the grade 11s what was the best thing about grade 10, and they always talk about the work experience program, which is three weeks at the end of the year, and it can extend into four weeks into the holidays, um, as some German um, companies prefer this. So that's a really good program. Um, of course, student government is strong at the school. Um, and uh, our current president and vice president are busily right now, as I speak, getting a base sale ready to raise some money for their various charities. And of course, we have the graduation ceremony at the end of the school year for our grade 12s once they have done their end of year exams, um, which is a, a real highlight. And we were one of the few schools last year amongst the pandemic to be able to, to put on um, a proper ceremony with all the pomp and circumstance that is required. Well, I hope that's given you a brief overview of the, the last four years here at BIS. And now it's time for question and answer. So I'll hand back to Dr. Sorensen. Thank you, Rowan. And thank you, everyone. Um, that was definitely a, a, a good overview. Um, and I think uh, I'll just go, like I said before, I'll go to the questions. I will start reading them in, in order and either respond or delegate as, um, as needed. So the first question we have is, is it possible to provide an example of incorporating play approach? I'll hand that over to um, Paul Hertzis. Hello, yes, I'm, I'm glad I got that question. Thank you. Um, how, how, an example, an example in our early years is where the children were learning rhymes and so on, and they, they incorporated the, the rhyme of Humpty Dumpty. I won't tell you the rhyme. I'm just going to assume that you know who Humpty Dumpty is. And the children then, after they'd done the rhyme, and they decided to build a new wall for Humpty, and they had to decide which materials to use. So they were incorporating science. How do you know which materials would be fitting together? Incorporating maths, sort of trans translation and transformation of shapes, words. What kind of shapes would be the best thing to build the wall with, with as, as well as the materials? And then they continued on with the writing and the story and the language acquisition in terms of what happened next in the Humpty Dumpty story. 
So it's 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 about capturing what's fun for the children and the teacher incorporating those bits that we need the children to learn and we want the children to learn because we do have the grade level expectations of course for every grade level as well to say okay we need to teach the child the children this in science how can we teach them the science through play and so on so i hope that gives a little example of some of the things that we might do through play thank you yeah perfect thank you all right, next question. Good morning and thank you for the deep overview. Can you please clarify what do you mean by you take the learning process as when the childs are ready or the children are ready? Is there still a timing uh, by when you understand that the child should be evolving and reaching certain levels of knowledge? Not all children are equal. And with this approach, this may create heavy requirements on the teacher's capacity. Thank you in advance. And I'll, I'll put that back over to um, Ms. Hotsu again. Okay, yes, thank you. I'm really glad that that question came out because I realized that was the bit I missed in my presentation. So thank you for that. Yes, of course, we have the grade level expectations for every grade level. These are measured against global no norms, literally worldwide through the IB and through ourselves as well, where we cross reference the different um, curriculums around the world to make sure that we're pitching for the right level of, of um, learning that's required at the age of the child. Um, what we do, though, is, is that we are encouraging the children to learn through this play. We're watching and monitoring. And so when they're ready, then we sort of launch in with, OK, this child is showing the signs that they are ready. They're showing pre-reading behavior. They're ready. Let's get in there and teach them to read. So we're teaching them to read all of the time. We're exposing them to books. We're exposing them to stories. We're exposing them to vocabulary, letters, sounds, and so on. And, and when they're showing interest that they're ready to try by themselves, then that's when we pick them up and, and fly with them. It doesn't mean that if they're not showing those signs that we don't teach them to read. Of course we do. But it's, it's about, it's a really fine balance. It comes with experience in the program and a, and a passion for teaching and learning and that close observation and the close relationship working with the children to know that they're ready for the next step. It, it's just, it means that the learning process goes a little bit quicker because we're capturing them when they're ready. Children can also learn, they can learn through being exposed to flashcards and repeat and practice. It just takes a little bit longer. So it's about that being really informed in where the children are right now and always pushing, pushing, pushing gently and until they get to the next step as well. But it's not that if they don't show the signs, they don't learn to read, absolutely not at all. We have our, we have our learning expectations that all of the children are measured against and, and that we're work, working to get the children towards. Thank you. Uh, what additional activities are available? Uh, I believe this was a question, it was, it was uh, posed during the primary, but um, basically it's after school activities in general. So I'll, I'll just take it. And if you have any other ones that I've forgotten that are highlights, um, please jump in, um, I asked my colleagues. Um, we have competitive sports, um, even in the primary level, they have a, a swim team. They do learn to swim as well. Um, and they have, um, uh, yeah, there's a tennis team, there is, oh, wow, um, football, there is karate, there is um, coding, there is robotics, um, I, I, anything you can think of, pretty much, I would say, we've even had crocheting in the past, so there's, there's a very wide range, it's very, very rare that there's a student that doesn't find anything. In the older grades, we even have a psychology reading group or a medical reading group, um, so there's academic, there's extension service activities, and uh, yeah, which I don't want to miss um, is our green team, um, which goes throughout the entire school. Did I miss any that you want to highlight? Nope. Okay. I hope that answered. Uh, next question, and I think this one is definitely primary. Um, how many German-based lessons are provided per week? And it says on which field. So I'm, I'm, I, I'm guessing that's a question about whether that is um, integrated with the, with the curriculum. Sure, sure. Uh, I'll give that over to um, Ms. Austin, please. Okay, so the, the students, the children have five German lessons a week. Um, the German is really, as much as possible, we integrate it with what the children are doing in, in the normal classes. Um, so we have 
the differentiation happening in the German classes as well. So we have more than one group per grade level where we perhaps have the beginner children um, in one group and the more advanced children in another group. And um, yes, the, the, it's, it's really meeting the child's need for German where they are. So we look at where the German is, where, what the expectations are for the end of the year, and we just work with the children individually. But it's, it's five lessons a week. Great, thank you. Um, next question, we're gonna stay with you actually, Ms. Austin. Um, uh, how many homework hours a week do kids from age eight until 11 years old have on average? Okay, so our days at school are really, really long, but we do encourage reading every single day. The children really need to read. So we encourage 20 minutes of reading every day. And then I would say probably over a week, it's four hours of homework a week. It's often just finishing their work, sometimes going home and doing some inquiry activities so that they can bring it back to their class. But because they have such a long day, we don't overwhelm them with homework, but there are some things that they really just need to be doing at home, learning their times tables, maybe learning their spelling words, um, finishing some of their work, but reading is something that we really focus heavily on for homework. Great, thank you. Uh, next question, is there Italian as a home language possibility? I can answer that one, yes. <laughs> it is definitely, we have a, we have a, and in fact, I could have actually given that to our admissions coordinator, Allegra Peruzzi, <laughs> but um, it is, it is, we have a, a strong Italian community here within the school. Next question, naturally in an international school setting, families or students may come and go over time, including close friends moving away. In your experience, how do children deal with that? This, I'll actually I'll I'll hand that first to Dr. Uh, Mr. Moisley uh, uh, from a secondary perspective, and then I'll hand it back to Ms. Hotza from a primary perspective. Hi, everybody. Um, the concern about third culture children uh, coming and going. The average stay at the school in the secondary school has extended uh, in recent years, um, but we do know the research tells us that students come into the school, they make quick, uh, deep friendships, but those friendships don't finish um, when they leave the school. They're used to the idea of transitioning in and out in an international community. 70% plus or minus of our school community are international students, they're not from inside Germany. Uh, but the students have to um, learn some resilient skills. They have to learn that uh, their friends may not be with them um, in, in sight the whole time, but those friendships won't continue. And uh, we do have support systems in place for when students do move on. And we see that as part of uh, growing and learning and transition. And it's a normal part of life to have to get used to this. Uh, but certainly for our school uh, children in international schools, we acknowledge their concerns and we support them uh, with programs that uh, help them uh, grow their resilience to that. that it's not the end of a friendship, it might be the beginning of new friendships. So I'll, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about what happens in primary school. Actually, um, we actually change, we mix up the classes every year and so that the children coming in new are not coming into a, a, a class that's already established in friendship groups. So every single year our children are used to changing their friendship, their social um, interactions and their peer group and they become very, very welcoming of new students. We actually have traditions and celebrations and processes that we do sort of rites of passage for the children we have a, a goodbye ceremony for every child who leaves so that all the children get to say goodbye to them it's actually very important for the children who are moving on our counselors also work with the children individually to make sure they're thinking about what they're going to miss about BIS what are they going to look back on and remember very fondly and what is it they're looking forward to taking forward to the next um, school that they go to so we're very much used to the transition, both coming in and coming out. And part of being in the international school may be strange for us to, to understand. Maybe we grew up and went to the same school and had the same best friend all the way through, but our children have lots of best friends. They are very, very social, very confident, and their friendships don't stop when the children leave and move on anyway. Our community actually stays very much together. There's lots of visitings that still happen um, come back, go, going on to other countries, Skype, calls, FaceTimes, all of those sorts of things keep the children in touch. And they have a different perspective on friendship than we did when, when we went to school. And, and that is something that's a little bit difficult for us as, 
adults to imagine, but it works beautifully well um, in the school. They're very, very open. Can I just say something and add something? Although Mrs. Herzl said we mix the kids up every year, we do, but we also do make sure that they are with a friend when they go up to their to the next grade level. So we, we keep that fine balance of being with a friend, not being alone, but making sure that they, they learn those social skills and learn to mix with all the different children. Excellent, yes. Thank you. Uh, next question, are African kids welcome too? All kids are welcome. It doesn't matter what your, <laughs> what, what your nationality is though. Absolutely. Next, um, next question. What are your fees like for children between three and a half years and five years? Why don't I pass that on to Katarina Roth for primary admissions? Yeah, sure. Um, so we do have a range of fees um, for different grade levels. In general, um, for grade one to five, the fees are approximately 15,000 euro per year, plus entrance and registration fee. Um, for a more detailed overview of all the fees across earlier center all the way through uh, grade 12. Um, yeah, just please contact either Allegra or myself and we're happy to share the full school prospectus with you. Great, thank you. Next question. Uh, we are finishing ninth grade in the Ukraine, education of 11 grades. We are 16 years old. What grades will we be enrolled in at your school? Please give full information on the cost of tuition and stay at your school. Okay, well, I think the, the, the tuition one was just answered. Um, and for that, definitely contact um, Ms. Peruzzi. Um, but then uh, finishing ninth grade in the Ukraine. So Dr. Skeen, would you like to take that question? Yeah, absolutely. But it sounds to me, I mean, I, I don't have um, a full knowledge of the Ukrainian um, system, but it sounds to me if you've done 11 years of study that you would be moving into perhaps grade 11. That sounds, as, sounds to me as though the DP, the CP or the high school diploma program would be apt for your son or daughter. Um, I could pass that to Ms. Peruzzi as well. She may have a better idea of the Ukrainian system. Yeah, it's about, it should be grade 11, but they should get in touch with us because I would need to check the date of birth. Um, and then we can also see how many years they've had of in, um, education before and then see the combination. It might also be that if they're not coming from international school that we maybe talk, is it better to enter grade 11 or in case grade 10, just to have an, ad an additional year before the diploma program. Great, thank you. Oh, okay. This one has numbered questions. So I'll do number question first. And it's about the PYP. Um, is Seesaw used as a regular platform for children's homework or is it used only during Corona times? Ms. Hölzel or Ms. Austin? Okay, so, so Seesaw is, is, is where the children document their portfolio. So they record their learning journey. They put in there what their goals are, how they're, how they're um, learning, how they're progressing, and, and their sort of evidence. We're documenting their learning journey for you, and that's shared with you. That's our primary use of Seesaw. We don't often use it for the children directly to do their learning in. We used it a lot for that during the distance learning, of course. It was a really easy way for us to set tasks for the children, the children to then access those tasks and, and, and do them or do them on paper, do them practically, whatever they were, and record back by taking a photo or a video or indeed sending back the activity to us to work. So we use that more for learning and interacting with the children during the corona times, but when we're in school, it's primarily used for documenting their learning journey. And as right. a communication. Oh yeah, sorry. The, yeah, yeah, it's really important. That that's the way that the teachers also communicate with you as the parents is through CESO, the activities that they, that's happening in the class, perhaps what's happening the next week, but it's also your communication platform. Great. Next question. My son is in kindergarten right now. Can he directly be admitted to the primary school once he, oh, the question went away. <laughs> Sorry. It was in the middle. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, I think it asked, it was asking um, it, whether um, it can be directly admitted into grade one or does it have to, you have to go through some sort of admissions test. So shall I, shall I answer that? Um, yes, please. The, yes, yeah. please. No, the, the, say we, we're, we're an international school and we realize that families work, move for work purposes very, very regularly. And so therefore, the, we're, we're used to children coming in in the middle of the year 
coming into different grade levels from very, very different schooling experiences beforehand. So yeah, the, the, the choice about when to bring your child to BIS is entirely yours if you're here already. And if you're moving from another country, of course, then as soon as the next opportunity comes available for you to join, um, then, then, then we sort of set the things in motion, prepare for the children to enter the school, let the children here already know you're getting a new child in your class um, on Monday, so everybody's prepared and ready, so yeah, so children can come in and out at any time. Um, I found the, the, the rest of the questions, so no worries. Um, it was the same, the same parent. Is there any special admission criteria? I think you just answered that. Um, can anyone be denied admission based on any kind of pre-assessment? Um, the only reason we would deny um, uh, admission is when, if we don't feel that what we can provide is in the best interest of your student, of your child, that would be the only time. Um, it's not a matter of a denial based on your, like I said, what, what country you come from, what your religious belief is, or where your child is um, academically. It has to do with um, if we don't feel ethically that it's the right school for your child. Um, that's the only reason we would deny admission. And lastly, uh, hap hypothetically speaking, if, if, her son, uh, if my son attends one year of Grundschule and then comes to BIS, will he start from grade one or grade two? Um, he would be age appropriately um, placed in grade two. Okay, then um, the, start of, the start date of the academic year for nine through 12, 2021 to 22. That's an excellent question because we do actually have a different calendar than um, the Bavarian state schools. We start always in um, mid to late August and we run through to the end of June. So our first day of school, uh, if I'm remembering correctly, is August 18th or 19th for um, this, this next school year. Um, the next one, deadline or a date of receipt of the response from, oops, deadline date of, for submission of documents. Um, as an international school, we have what's called a rolling admissions process. So we receive admissions throughout the entire year and therefore there is no deadline. Um, however, there are certain classes that um, are full um, or let's say become full quicker than others. Um, and so uh, the best person to tell you about the specific grade would be to talk to the respective um, admissions um, officer, either um, Ms. Peruzzi or Ms. Rode. Um, and the deadline date of receipt of the response from the school, usually that is within two weeks. We, we are able to respond to the application. So it goes through a process here. Um, in, the later in the later years of, um, of secondary, there's even an interviewing process um, depending upon the level of English so that we know that we can place your child correctly. Next, we are looking for a school for my daughter to start in grade 10. Would it be difficult for her to start in grade 10? I understand the program runs from grade nine. We are in an international IB school at the moment. Absolutely no problem to switch from one IB school to the other. That's the beauty of the program or of all four programs. Um, it makes that seamless transition from one country to another, from one international school to another. Uh, next question. My daughter is currently in the UK year three, but is born mid-September. According to your website, she will be in grade four, which is equivalent to the UK year five. Therefore, she will be jumping a year. Is there any sort of assessment for entry to gauge which grade would suit her best? Will she be disadvantaged by skipping this year in any way? I will pass that on to Ms. Holzer. Yes, the, the UK year three and the, the, the German or American grade five is actually, the, the um, sorry, grade four is, is, is the same. It, it's just a naming system for the, for the, for the years that the, the, the different schools and different countries use. What actually is the key important thing is that date of birth and the number of years experience the children have had in the school. As I mentioned earlier, our curriculum is um, leveled against global norms. So what your child does in year three is pretty much aligned with what we do in grade four. It's just a naming convention that's slightly different. So there will be no disadvantage at all. I'm obviously very familiar with the UK um, system anyway. And as I say, we're so used to children coming in and out no disadvantage at all and she will be put in the correct age appropriate year knowing confidently that she will be in the right place excellent uh question is by passing the abitur it's really take is it really taking the bavarian abitur prüfungen um i'll hand that over to dr skeen 
Yeah, sure. So what we do is we can still have the diploma program, the needs of the diploma program met with some other specific needs to do with the language, to do with a higher level, either in science or a higher level in maths, um, and uh, to do the, the right courses within, say, humanities. There's a couple of subjects that aren't necessarily recognized, but it's not doing the actual um, abitur exams. It's you get the abitur within our program. Um, and we're very, very careful in making sure that when students are moving from grade 10 into grade 11 and require the abitur or are moving from outside the school into the school into grade 11, that we sit down with them and talk to the student and talk to the parents about the requirements and how that affects the program. But no, there's no extra abitur exams that have to be taken. Um, next question. Also, do you have wait lists for any of the year groups currently? I'll pass that on to Ms. Peruzzi. Thank you, Chrissy. So we do have currently just a wait list in grade nine for next year. Um, that's why if you're interested in grade nine, you should send application as soon as possible. We're currently doing a re-registration of all of our students. So asking students and families if they're staying next year. And at the end of April, we should be then able to give an answer. And about other grades, we do not have currently wait wait list. Or Katarina, do, uh, in kindergarten, yeah, yeah, our EC two grade is slightly becoming fuller and fuller. Um, so just like for grade nine, um, please send your applications um, quite quickly so that we can um, see right after re-registration um, how many spaces we can offer. Yeah. Great, thank you. The next question, if I understood correctly, sixth grade will differ slightly than previous years. It will be more of a transition year towards regular MYP program. Could you please share more about this? I'll hand that over to Mr. Morley. Mr. Morley's, nope, Mr. Morley doesn't want to be unmuted. <laughs> so yes, um, I, I can I can answer or uh, uh, Angela Hertzel, would you like to say a few words? Yeah, of course, actually it's not gonna be the different next year. It's going to be the same as it is this year. We, um, we've been researching for a long time how best to, to, to help the children transition from the PYP into the MYP program. And the, the leap from the, the homeroom based approach that we offer in primary school to the secondary school approach with lots of different teachers and rooms and so on. And we sort of like really researched the model that's often in Canada, I believe, and other places around the world where the, the children have predominantly a homeroom teacher who they're with in their own classroom with the same group for maths, language, um, science and humanities and PSE. And then they still go to their specialist teachers for the other areas. So it just cuts down on that need to have so many different teachers in their first year of the MYP program. It allows them to have that secure environment that they're used to from being in primary school and learn about how the MYP program runs um, sort of with, with the majority of their time spent with one teacher and one group of children. So it, it has worked out, we have to admit, really better than we could have expected. You say after all of this research and excitement that we had in bringing that into place, we are so delighted to see how well it's working for the children now. And so, yes, we're definitely going to continue with that next year for sure. Yeah, I think I can, Brett's now I off, can pick off up mute. Oh, there yeah, you go, Brett. <laughs> Yeah, it was something that um, certainly um, Dr. Sorensen and I had experienced in previous international schools, um, having a transition program from grade five, um, the end of PYP uh, into MYP. And it, we just were able to do it for the first time this year. Uh, we recruited um, specialist staff for the program. We were middle school specialists that gave us also the subject specialist background that we needed. And we are very happy, we're delighted with the outcome of the program. And we're delighted with the response from the students that feel that they're cared for, that they're loved and supported, they're academically challenged, but they know that they belong. They know that this is a special year in their lives. Um, in grade seven and beyond, they move to more of a regular high school program, but we felt that this is an ideal bridge for them. And uh, as I say, we've been very happy with it. It's a success for us. Great, thank you. Next question, thank you for your presentation. As you have two campuses, would you recommend a new student entering fifth grade to go first to the city campus for a year or go directly to Heim Housing? Um, I'll take that actually. It's, um, it, it, it really makes more sense to, to ask it back to the person, where do you live and what, what do you think for your child um, 
is best as far as travel time. If you are within Munich, close to the Schwabing campus, and this is a new school for them, then I would certainly say the city campus is ideal. Um, it gets them into the whole program. Um, and, uh, and we are one school, even though we're on two campuses. If you do live outside of Munich, then it might be more, make more sense that you come to Heimhausen right away and not, not to the city campus. Um, but um, it's the same program in both, both locations. The primary principals, as well as the primary, um, the PYP coordinators, as well as teachers do a lot of collaboration across the, the two campuses as well. So um, you can't make a wrong choice, I'll say that. Um, when, do you pup when do the pupils start with chemistry and when with French? So um, I will hand that first to um, Dr. Skeen and then over to Mr. Moyley. Yeah, sure. Um, so in grade nine, we have uh, nine lessons of science in a fortnight. And that is uh, so that they have a rotation of three lessons per fortnight in the specific science. So they will do three lessons of physics, three lessons of biology and uh, three lessons of chemistry in grade nine. That moves then also into grade 10. Um, and that gives them the great opportunity to choose which of those sciences or perhaps two of those sciences they decide to take at the DP program. All right, Mr. Wiley, French. With regard, I just want to touch on chemistry for a moment because in each of the uh, grade six, seven and eight years, there's at least one unit, um, one teaching unit per year of uh, chemistry taught. So it doesn't just begin in grade nine, it does start as a discipline within the subject in, from grade six onwards. With regard to French, it depends. Um, French starts in uh, grade uh, six, and there are two options. One is to take the language acquisition for students that have not studied French before, or have very limited French, they come into a language acquisition course. But it's also uh, possible to do French uh, home language, a mother tongue course as well, and that's integrated into the regular timetable. Great, thank you. I love this next question. Um, how do you go about finding the individual superpowers of students you talked about? <laughs> um, very well put. Uh, Actually, it has a lot to do with the relationship building that we have with the, with the, between the teachers and the students. And they're able to, um, if they, as a classroom teacher or a single subject teacher, are not able to find exactly why this student is having an issue in one area or another, um, then um, they can reach out to those other specialists that we have on staff. Um, it's rare, um, but we've even then um, asked for outside help um, to get an outside assessment if we really don't know what else is, is missing. And then we work with that outside consultant to then um, uh, help the teacher make sure that they're helping the, the student learn at their best capacity. So um, my son knows what his superpower is as an eighth grader, and he will tell you. Um, but I think most of our students actually, they do tell you how, how they can best learn. So hope that answers that question. Uh, is there a minimum requirement with re regards to English level entering secondary school? I'll hand that over to Mr. Moyley. Um, no, there's not a minimum requirement. And I mentioned in the presentation, we have a unique feature called Newcomer Centre, which enables students with either no or very limited uh, English to come into an international school. In nearly all other schools, that student will be uh, placed into a language acquisition English class. Um, for want of a better term, thrown into the deep end, but we don't do that. Uh, the Newcomer Centre is dedicated to helping students acquire both conversational and the technical language of English until such time as they're ready to integrate into uh, more regular mainstream classes. That can be six months, that can be 12 months, or that can be 18 months. But our aim is that all students will integrate into the full programme by the end of grade eight, so that they're ready to uh, work on the uh, transcript years there. So it's a unique program for um, families, so for students that have um, zero or virtually no English. Exactly. Dr. Skeen, is there anything you wanted to add there? It looked like you were about to talk. 
<laughs> yeah, sure. Um, it becomes a, a little bit more of an issue as you get up to the, the, the sharper end of the school. Um, but of course, we have our EAL classes in grade nine and grade 10. We also have specific EAL classes in the humanities and also in the sciences. And we also have special support classes in grade nine and grade 10 maths. So, um, and obviously we always monitor at the end of grade nine and the end of grade 10, especially if students have come in during the year, what the levels of English are, because naturally um, the levels of uh, English language um, acquisition are, are quite important if you're, if you're wanting your son or daughter to move to the, the latter years. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, generally, what is the spoken language between the kids socially? Uh, can you give better sense of which classes are taught in German versus English? Well, I can tell you the shared language is absolutely English. Um, even if there is a group, let's say, of uh, German speaking children, if somebody who they know is not a German speaker comes to them, they immediately all switch to English. Um, I will say also that walking down the halls, you will hear all the different languages um, if they're in their in their uh, let's say culture group, um, but they there aren't clicks um, so that you may have heard from from different because uh, it's only about 25% of our students that are actually German mother tongue or German German as a home language. Um, it's um, it's very, very diverse and that's why English is definitely the shared language. Um, and then because it was already answered in the primary, maybe um, I'll give this one to secondary about the German versus English. Uh, Mr. Morley. Okay, yes, um, the language instruction in the school is uh, English, so every student takes uh, English either as a home language, as a first language, or as language acquisition. Through grade 10, every student is required to take German either as a home language, language and literature course, or language acquisition, and all language acquisition courses for English and for German are phased, depending on the student's level of competence, and they can move vertically from language acquisition to language and literature if they need to, or in fact, if they are misplaced when they arrive in a language and literature, a home language, they can um, move within the timetable to a language acquisition German or English course. So it's a very flexible model that supports students at whatever their language learning level is. Um, it's fluid upwards and downwards. Great, thank you. Uh, my daughter plays piano in music school. Do you offer lessons in fifth grade? I'll hand that over to Miss uh, Austin. You haven't spoken for a while. <laughs> yes, um, the children can take individual, individual lessons for different instruments. We have some specialists that come in and offer lessons. Often early in the morning or after school, we try and not, if as much as possible, um, have it happening in the day where it might interrupt their normal lessons. But yes, they do have the opportunity to take lessons here at school. Yes. Uh, does grade 10 work experience take place this year with the circumstances of the COVID pandemic? I'll hand that to Dr. Skeen. Yes, we are hoping to have our work experience um, happen. We're planning for it to happen. Of course, we're at the mercy of the rules and regulations right now. But uh, yes, um, the, the simple answer is we are uh, planning for it to go ahead. Great. Uh, is German compulsory in grades 10 through 12? As my daughter does not speak German, we would love her to, but she would also like to continue French. If German is not taught at these grades for her beginner level, would there be an opportunity for her to learn the language outside of school hours apart from a tutor uh, we would hire outside of school? It would be ideal if she could get exposure to the language and culture in Germany. Thank you very much. I'll hand that over to, again, Dr. Skeen. Well, yes, I think um, the, the previous um, question about German is, is uh, that, that we, yes, we do. It's a uh, second language that is taught, English and German, um, at phase one in grade nine, as well as all the other phases and at mother tongue and in grade 10 as well. Um, so yes, the answer is yes, um, and allows your daughter to springboard, perhaps if she's coming in grade 10, into German ab initio in grade 11. So, and French is uh, obviously, as Mr. Moyley said, there are the three, the three courses, uh, the three language courses that they take. So definitely can still take French. Next question, another one of my favorites. Do you have a swimming pool? Not yet. <laughs> I, am, I have been, uh, I'm, a, I'm a passionate uh, swimmer myself. I've been a competitive swimmer since I was six years old. Um, and actually I even uh, am a coach, the coach of the, um, the varsity and uh, swim team here at the school. 
Um, we swim at the Oberschleißheim pool. Um, we, we take the space there. Um, and uh, actually, it's before school, uh, three days a week. And then the kids get into the a bus that we provide that come, brings them to school. So they're never on, uh, not on time. They are always on time to school and they are ready to learn because they've already done their swim workout for the morning. Um, but I do say, um, I, I definitely have plans in a drawer for a, a pool at BIS. If you know anybody who has a couple of a million extra, then please send them my way. <laughs> um, in case our mother tongue language is not offered, what is the school approach? I'll hand that over to Mr. Morley. That's a very good question at the moment. Um, we offer, do offer 14 uh, home languages. It's by negotiation if it's a, We'll try and make it happen. Um, our attitude towards a home language is that we're supporting the children's uh, culture, their heritage, the uh, ability to communicate with their families back home and to not lose those uh, uh, cultural connections. So the best thing is to, uh, if it's a student in grades six to eight, is to talk to me directly and I'll put you in touch with the home languages coordinator and our aim will be to find a way. If it's simply not possible, home language uh, teaching is done at the same time as language acquisition, French, Spanish or Chinese. So the option is to move into one of those classes. But my aim will be to facilitate the home language if at all possible. Great, thank you. Um, how are corridor kinda birthday in late summer treated in terms of when they start first grade? Uh, shall I give that to Ms. Ms. Rote first? Um, so we do have slightly different um, birthday grade level determinations. So our cutoff date is uh, 30th of September. Um, so if your child is six years old, by the 30th of September, it will start in grade one. So they are treated just like all the other children in grade one who have their birthday earlier. Um, but yeah, our cutoff date is 30th of September, which is a little bit later than uh, in the rest of Bavaria. Um, and I'll just add at the same time, we do take the kids individually. So if um, we, as well as the parents feel it's important that the student has an extra year in kindergarten, then that's also possible so that they, they don't have to start because they are, if they're not ready to start yet, then they can also um, do an extra year of, of, of the early years. Another thing that we do um, for the German um, home language speakers, um, we do a language screening with them. We have a speech therapist who comes into school and um, really um, evaluates the children if their mother tongue German is um, developed well enough to start with another language. Yeah. Super. Next question. How much homework is to be expected in the MYP? Um, Mr. Morley, Good take question. it away. Um, we do have guidelines um, in MIP uh, one through three, and it varies between 60 and 120 minutes. But we have a commitment mainly to uh, language learning and uh, mathematics, where we see the greatest value um, of homework. We don't see any value in homework for the sake of giving homework, and we do not encourage teachers to give homework where there is not new learning or practice of existing skills. So, and we monitor it closely and we work with the uh, grade level teachers and the students themselves to make certain that um, children have free time every evening, um, that they're not um, staying up late trying to complete, um, finish this for homework tasks. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Um, next question, is English the medium across all the classes and other communication throughout the school? Is the German language required to interact with others and after school activities? Initially, kids might not have any communication skills in German language. True, our, our shared language is English and that's across everything, including our after school activities. Um, uh, so your child does not need to know a German right away, but I will tell you that they pick it up rather quickly, just as with English. Um, if the English is not their home language, they pick up that very quickly. Um, but the, the language of instruction, our daily language is English. Uh, next question. What would you say are the primary differences between your school and traditional Bavarian public schools? I could give this to everybody, but I'm going to give it actually to Ms. Hotze because she actually has a son that transferred from one to the other. So I'll give it to you, Angela. Gosh, I don't think I've got long enough to to. to, to <laughs> um, you know, you know, there are many fine qualities and, and things about the, the Bavarian school system. Um, the, the things that I 
would look at the, the primary school here and say, well, what is different and, and, and why is it better? Is this idea that everybody's in learning at their own pace, that they're being pushed, they're being encouraged, they have opportunities to learn, to speak up, to inquire, to play, and, and so on. Like my experience of my son when he was in the, the Grundschule here was that all of the children did all of the, the, the learning at the same time. They all use the same reading book and so on. And then there's the, the I would call personal horror of grade four when they've got to try and decide already at such a young age which academic path is the right path for them. And, and from my own personal experience with children, I think, you know, children develop and blossom at all different rates and paces and have very different needs. And the German um, system caters very well for a certain type of learner and BIS caters very well for all types of learners. That's probably the, the quickest and easiest way I can answer that question. Thank you. Um, I, and I, I'll just add, because I don't know that that came through really clearly, whether in the presentation or not, we don't actually give grades to our primary school students. There are no grades. Um, it's all about their learning, their learning journey. It, there's a lot of information that is given about their learning and where they are, and we do benchmark. Um, but it isn't a grade. They don't start getting grades until they actually reach secondary school. So do you provide help for kids with dyslexia? Short answer, yes. <laughs> that was a quick one. That's what our learning support and our, our teachers, they are, they're equipped to, to help with dyslexia. Next question. I understand that at one point today's, uh, uh, at one point today's pandemic will be roughly controlled. Uh, let's hope so, yes. However, in the event of another similar situation, what are the actions you have in place for handling the situation, remote teaching? Um, well, I have to say that we were ahead of the curve uh, because we had already in 2002 put together a crisis matrix. Um, what would happen if actually some or all of our kids and our teachers weren't, weren't able to come to school? So for us, um, a year ago, it was literally from one day to the next that we could flip the switch. Um, because we had integrated technology, the only thing that really was new for our, our staff and for our students was uh, Google Meet, the feature of, of being online. Um, but they were familiar with the Google Suite. Um, we use Google Classroom, we use um, a Google Docs and other collaboration tools. They were familiar with Seesaw in the primary, they were familiar with ManageVac. Um, so it really was able, we were able to um, really turn on a dime. Um, and of course, it's that professional learning uh, for staff that continues. Um, we have dedicated ed educational technology specialists that um, continue to come up with, um, with um, new um, apps or new ways for um, staff and students to interact as well as us to interact um, so that um, it's always continuing to improve. Um, we also, last thing I'll say on this topic is that we are have feedback loops, so with the students, with the staff, and with parents, what is working, what is not working, we take that back, and then we can, again, tweak what we do so that um, it is um, in the best interest of the kids learning and that it's working. So I hope that, it, unless somebody wants to add something else to that one, no, great. Um, I'm just conscious of the time because we've been on here um, already from uh, until 1130. We have 10 more questions that I'm happy to take really quickly. And I'm thank thankful for those of, who have been able to stay on as long as you have. Is there a school bus service to reach the school? Uh, I'll give that to Ms. Peruzzi. Yes, we do have a bus service um, that comes to BIS. We in fact have 65 buses that come from the Munich area, but also the outskirts of Munich. Some students do also take public transportation to come to school. Um, we are not too far away from the S1 line. That's the light blue line that goes to the airport. And then there is a bus, a public bus that comes to school. Some families also choose to live in the high mountain area and then the children again cycle to school or the parents drop them off to school. Super, thank you. Uh, the next question, do COVID, uh, due to the COVID situation, is it possible for parents to enter the campus? In general, right now, it is not possible. Um, uh, we had a, a diploma program and, and career-related program, um, visual arts exhibition yesterday evening. And we did want, that's a, that's a culminating event for that class. It's actually the final assessment. So um, we did want parents of those students to be able to come. 
Um, and what we required there was a negative test, FFP2 mask, um, and then they were allowed to, to enter for that. But otherwise, um, very few parents right now are, are on site. If they are, again, they're always masked and they have to provide a, a negative test. Um, and especially with the self-tests, self that's becoming much easier now. Are there any particular uh, US universities with which your school has a relationship or that you that know your school? Um, again, I can say absolutely. Um, uh, I know we just had two students from this last year um, that went to Duke, um, but the list of our um, uh, acceptances to US schools is actually listed on our website. Um, and you can see, you can maybe find your own. I know my alma maters are on there. That's the University of San Diego, the University of California. Um, they're, they're both on there. Uh, Stanford is on there. Uh, students, Columbia, they, 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 they do know us, our school. They definitely know our program. And most US universities are very, very pleased to see um, the, the IBDP or even just the high school di diploma, but the IBDP helps the, their students become, uh, the students become very successful quickly in uh, university when they're off on their own. Can I just add, um, Dr. Sorensen, to yes, that? Please. Uh, that we also have a dedicated specialist North American University counselor. Uh, so we have three university counselors and one of those is dedicated just to uh, the American uh, college boards. So yes. we're well catered for. Let me, um, let me go back to the question about, is it a possible for parents to enter the, co the campus right now? Because it, it occurs to me that that may have been a question about um, admissions. So why don't I pass that on to um, Ms. Uh, Ms. Roach? Yeah, sure. We, um, we do offer tours, on-site tours as well. Um, if you were in a, um, in a risk area, we of course ask you to provide, um, first of all, do the quarantine, the mandatory quarantine and provide us with a neg negative test. Um, but yeah, we're happy to, to show you the school on-site. Great, thank you. Um, next question, uh, do the children in 9 through 12 need to bring their own school supplies, notebooks, etc.? Dr. Skeen. Yeah, sure. Um, we supply students with, uh, in grades 9 to 12, um, and also in the younger years with uh, laptops. Um, so this is the, the prime instrument that uh, students use, and we teach them very carefully how to use those. So any other paper-based documents, um, uh, notebooks and textbooks and those sorts of things are supplied generally by the school. Uh, but yeah, there may be the need for um, parents to provide you know, folders and, and those sorts of things, but it's fairly minimal. Yeah, I can say as, as a parent now who of a child who's been in the secondary for three years, um, uh, I mean, other than pencils and, and uh, colored pencils or, or, or something like that, it, it's, a, it's a small list. Uh, next question, would children be able to do primary school at your school and then move on to a German gymnasium? Will they need to take an additional test? Um, how about uh, Ms. Peruzzi? Can I give you that one? Yes, of course. Um... Uh, we do have some students that maybe for some one reason or another decide to move to a German school, um, a German gymnasium after grade four, because that's maybe the year when they want to move. Um, generally, we've had students that had to do tests directly at the gymnasium. Some students have had to do a probe week, so a trial week at the gymnasium. Every gymnasium seems to do it a bit different. Um, so you'll have to contact the gymnasium directly. They probably ask for transcripts and more information about the students. Um, so. I would suggest to contact Ignazium directly if that's the case. Um, another important thing is if you do think about trans moving to Ignazium later, so when you're in, you're in your child's in secondary school, it is quite important that your child takes French as a third language starting in grade six, because it will be quite hard to find a gymnasium, at least in the Munich area that offers Spanish and Chinese, definitely you are not gonna find anyone. So I would suggest if you're considering this, that your child takes um, French, as a third language, as a, um, a BIS. Great, thank you. I can tell you also in, um, in Dresden, um, we had actually over 60% of our, our kids were from German families. And uh, there, uh, there were kids that went from the PYP into the German system and they didn't have any issues other than um, they um, felt that they didn't have as much student voice <laughs> as they did or agency as they did, do at our school. Um, 
Good morning. Do you offer holiday camps, for example, skiing in winter or scout camps in summer time for the upper grades? So um, I will, I will, I, I can take a quick one. Um, we do for certainly holiday camps for our primary school. We do have uh, camps available. Um, usually it, they happen at our, or in the past they've happened at our um, city campus. Um, it's usually just easier for people to get to. The, um, in the uh, scout camps, we have, we have a scouting after school activity. We have that both boy and girl scouts um, and they do do camps all over the place. Um, so I know that those exist. Um, and uh, we, are, we have been in conversations with actually um, um, offering English language and other kinds of camps, um, but this was pre-corona. And of course, we're not allowed to then have them this last summer. Um, and we're still in contact um, with two different providers to do that this year, um, but we'll see what corona throws at us, uh, whether we're allowed to do that. Next question, we're down to our last two. Do children take iPads or MacBooks home to finish, for example, homework or project? Um, I'll, I'll, I'll answer for the secondary first. They do take their, their devices home every day. Um, uh, and they are actually supposed to make sure that they're fully charged when they come to school the next morning. So uh, that's their responsibility. For primary, it's a little different and I'll hand over to Ms. Hotsu. Yeah, the, the children in grades three, four, and five have access to a one-to-one -one iPad device in their classroom, but they don't take them home. The, the, as you say, we, we're very careful to use technology for the right reasons to, to complement what we're doing in the classroom and enhance the teaching and learning that could not could, would happen ordinarily without um, digital technology. Um, but obviously when we went down into distance learning, then of course the children took the iPads home because they had to, to engage with us and it was much easier for that. So I think that we're going to keep that policy in absolute place that the children use the iPads in school when it's appropriate and, and it's in enhancing the learning. And then they only take them home if we know that, okay, we're going into distance learning, the children will leave them at home. And then from grade six onwards, that's when they start taking their device home every day. Great. And last question. Good morning. I would like to know if Spanish language is one of the options available in the DP as a B language. I'll hand that over to Dr. Skeen. I'll be very short and simple. Absolutely, yes. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Well, that concludes our virtual open day and all the questions. Of course, if anything else comes pops into your mind, reach out to um, either Ms. Peruzzi or Ms. Roth. Um, they'll be happy to answer any of your questions. Um, thank you. And I thank you to all the panelists for, for your time and your, your information. Um, and I wish you a nice sunny day. Bye. <laughs>